It is a meaningful game, though, for Philadelphia, and I want to shift our attention to the Sixers. Oh, They're only yeah. one game behind the Pacers for the third spot. If the playoffs started today, Philly would see Boston in the first round. We have chronicled their struggles in that matchup countless times. So are the Sixers wasting, Stan, that opportunity to gain ground on the Pacers without Victor Oladipo and, and get into that three spot so that they don't have to look at the Celtics? I would think with Joel Embiid coming back that mm -hmm. they're, they're going to get by the Pacers and, and avoid that first round matchup with the Celtics. I mean, personally, I would love to see that first round matchup wow. because the first round generally isn't that interesting. Right. That one would be real interesting because either team that lost that would really have some problems yeah. Huge in terms of perception. Too, yeah. yeah, so I'd love to see it, but I don't think it's going to happen. You know. I like how Stan's rooting for chaos. Oh, <laughs> it's amazing. No, I'm, in, I'm rooting for interesting. Good TV. It's good TV. Mm -hmm. the, the thing, Rachel, last week when you were uh, in Boston, I, I hosted the jump and I did the monologue was about the Lakers and mm -hmm. if they want to make the playoffs, the, the one thing you can't do is mess up the non-negotiables. Right. Like, this is a non-negotiable. You can't lose. I don't care if Embiid plays or not. You can't lose to Chicago. Right. I don't care how well they've been playing recently. You cannot lose to Chicago. And so these are the games that will come back and bite you in the you-know-what. Mm -hmm. And then you end up in a situation where we could have played a scrappy Brooklyn Nets team. Instead, we're playing a team that has aspirations to win the championship in the mm -hmm. first round. And you can't... It's just... What we're talking about in these moments, this stretch of the year, is the attention to detail, the things that we're not going to mess up. Right. We're going to get beat by great offense. We're going to get beat by great players. We're not going to get beat by two guys jumping Robin Lopez. Like, what, what? <laughs> No, and, and look, your communication's got to be better. It means right because you're going to play close games in the playoffs. You're going to have to win those close games. You cannot make those kind of mistakes. I mean, by the way, that in and of itself, because again, Robin Lopez, not his brother, does not make shots from there that often. Well, but uh, well, he, he doesn't. I, I think he's got I 10 miss. career he three huge, I know he wasn't behind the arc, but I, still. I, I, he had a huge first quarter last night. Maybe they were still, still there, thinking uh, of that. But even beyond about that, again, did. Anyone but Zach Levine. They couldn't yes. put it was like what was that wall of defenders that the Atlanta Hawks put on Harden or something to end his streak? Like Zach Levine had 37 points at that point. Just just he, stay with him. He You're was good. so open. He looked shocked. He, right. he, he, well, he wasn't you know, the play. He did. He, he was hesitated to, a little bit. He was supposed to take. If you listen to them after the game, he was supposed to take that hand off from Lolo at the elbow and pass it because they assumed he would he draw jumped, so yeah. much yeah. attention. And instead, he was like, oh, I think when I'll just doubt. score it. Let's get to the really <laughs> important issue of this game, the ninja-style headbands that Jimmy Butler sported last night. I mean, thoughts? Uh, look, someone in the league office needs to have a conversation with Nike. We got to stop this. Drew Holiday, you're on the list as well. <laughs> this has got to stop. This is not Karate Kid 2. Glory of Love is not playing in the background, <laughs> right? Pina Shatera is not walking through that door. We can't have this. this it looks ridiculous. What? It's not even ergonomic. His tassels flying everywhere. <laughs> Stan, I think you'd look good in one of those. Listen, I'm the last person that should comment on style. Okay? <laughs> it's just something I should never talk about, but I'm with the mean. I don't. I don't like the look. I, I, I would advise anybody to go on the internet and see your straight out of Detroit album cover. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I would argue yeah. that you are the last person to comment on Ra style. You are all about style, Stan Van Gundy. Rachel, real quick. Jerry Sloan used to have a rule. No headbands at all. I wonder what he what, like if Jerry Sloan were coaching today, what, how he'd feel about the ninja style head. Uh, <laughs> well, no, look, Pat Riley had that rule too until LeBron came. Yeah, right, and then, then that rule changed. Things, <laughs> things change.